Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I want to show you how to find the limit of a rational function as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. We have these three cases here, so depending on how your function looks like, you will have case 1, case 2 or case 3. There are no other cases out there, so if you follow this video you will know exactly what to do depending on the case you're in. A rational function in general is a fraction consisting of a polynomial function in your numerator and a polynomial function in your denominator. And to know in which case we are, we only have to take a look at the highest exponents of our function here. So we go to the top and search for our highest exponent. We have the 3 here as an exponent, and here we have a 1, so the 3 is our highest exponent. And the same on the bottom, our highest exponent here is the 8. So our highest exponent on top, I call it t, is less than our highest exponent on the bottom, I call it b. This is case 1. Case 2, let's take a look at the highest exponent. This is the 7 here on top and on the bottom it's the 7 as well. So that's case 2, that these two numbers are the same. So on top it's equal uh, to the number on the bottom, the highest exponent. And case 3, we have an 8 as the highest exponent here and a 3 as our highest exponent on the bottom. So our highest exponent on the top is greater than the highest exponent on the bottom. So these are our three cases. Let's start with case number one. We first take a look at the limit as x approaches infinity and check negative infinity then at the end as well. Here we already know our highest exponent on top is less than our highest exponent on the bottom. And I can tell you immediately as a shortcut that this limit is always going to be zero. It's as simple as this, but I will also give you an explanation why that is. And by the way, it's not only zero as x approaches infinity, but also as x approaches negative infinity. So that doesn't change anything, it's always zero. So the first case is really nice. And the reason why that is, is as we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity, we only have to look at the terms with the highest exponent. So this is my term with the highest exponent and this is my term with the highest exponent. These other terms don't matter. So if I want to find the limit, I can just take this first term with my highest exponent and here my term with my highest exponent and then find the limit of this new fraction then. I can reduce this fraction. I have x to the power of 3 and x to the power of 8. So if I reduce it by 3 of these x's, I only have x to the power of 5 then in my denominator. So my limit as x approaches infinity is going to be 5 over 2x to the power of 5. And if I calculate this now, my x approaches infinity. So my 5 in my numerator here won't change. There is no x in there. So it will always approach 5. And here in my denominator, x approaches infinity. So my x is going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And it's going to get bigger and bigger. So it approaches infinity itself. So we have 5 over infinity, which is going to be a really small number and approaching 0. So no matter if you approach positive infinity or negative infinity, this is always going to be 0. So as a shortcut, just write 0 and you're done. Case number 2. Here we have our highest exponent on top is equal to the highest exponent on the bottom. And this is also an easy case because then my limit has a shortcut first and then I can give you the explanation. Um, it, it will consist of the numbers in front of my powers. So the 3 and the 5, I just have to take the 3 and divide it by the 5 and this is the result already. And also here, doesn't matter for 
positive infinity or negative infinity. It's the same. The explanation, the same as we already had in case one. If we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity, I don't have to take all of this stuff. I just need the things with my highest exponent. So all of that doesn't matter for my limit, all of this also. So I only have my 3x to the power of 7 and here my 5x to the power of 7. I cancel things out, this time the x to the power of 7 and the only thing that is left is my 3 over 5. There is no x in there, so nothing can change as x approaches infinity. So my limit is 3 over 5. And also no matter if I approach positive infinity or negative infinity. So as a shortcut, just write this and you're done. Third case, a little bit more to do. But the third case is when my highest exponent is greater than my highest exponent on the bottom. Here we don't have any shortcut. We just do exactly the same things we just did as an explanation for the other cases. So we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this fraction. Then I know that all these uh, terms of lower exponents don't matter for my limit. So I only take the term with my highest exponent, the negative x to the power of 8. And here the same. I don't need all of this stuff here. I just take the term with my highest exponent and now I just find the limit of this expression. To do that, we can first simplify our fraction. So we have x to the power of 8 in here and x to the power of 3. So if we cancel out three of these x's, we only have x to the power of 5 in our numerator. So we have negative x to the power of 5 here. And on the bottom, we only have the 4. Okay, what happens now if x approaches infinity? Well, our x is in here, only in this one spot. And if x approaches infinity, x to the power of 5 also approaches infinity. But we have this negative sign in front of this, so this whole numerator approaches negative infinity then. In our denominator, there is no x in here. So the 4 won't change, it will always stay the 4. But in total, we have negative infinity over 4. The 4 doesn't change anything uh, of this limit here, so it stays negative infinity in total. So depending on the function you're working with, you only have to find the limit of the small fraction at the end. And this was just the limit as x approaches infinity. It could be different from the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So we have to find this as well. But we don't have to start here because the steps would all be the same. We can just start here. So just take the negative x to the power of 5 over the 4 and find the limit now as x approaches negative infinity. Maybe we start on the bottom here because there is no x in here. The 4 doesn't change. It will still approach the 4. But here on top we have our x. This time x approaches negative infinity. So negative infinity to the power of 5. What happens with this expression here? The exponent is an odd number. So we have a negative number raised to an odd number will stay negative. So this ex expression will approach negative infinity because of the odd number. But then we have negative, negative infinity. So in total, the numerator will approach infinity. So this time we have infinity over 4. So the 4 doesn't change anything with our infinity here. So this whole thing will approach infinity then. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!